Hello everybody, and welcome back to another Nautical Tales episode, and it's been a very, very long time since I've last done one of these, and I've got another 16 or so minutes of some awesome World of Warships moments for all of you. Starting off with Jericho Ronin playing a 155 Mogami. Now 155 Mogamis, they're okay in certain situations, they're not so good in some other ones, but the one thing they're very good at is killing destroyers. And especially if you're a destroyer and you run into one of these things and you weren't expecting it, your day can end in a real hurry. Enemy Kagero popped up, wasn't really aware that there was a Mogami waiting for him, two salvos, and the Kagero's going underwater. Shimikaze, well, at this kind of range, equally in trouble. First salvo goes in, doesn't do that much damage, but does actually disable the engine. Shimakaze, as you can tell, in a bit of trouble there. Second salvo in, and there goes more than half the HP of that Shimakaze. And of course, Shimakaze uses torpedoes earlier, and that long torpedo reload isn't going to do you any favors. Salvo number three, almost gone. Bring the rear guns into action. Goodbye, Shimakaze. Now the 155s, aside from dealing with destroyers, they're also good at another thing, setting fires. They're really good at making things burn, especially battleships. That eye were in the distance, okay, keep an eye out on those ribbons over there. You'll see how, what happens. There it goes, two fires. All right, so Jericho turns around, gets his torpedoes into action, fires them towards that Izumo, who is not very far away. And of course, that Izumo, as you can tell, is in trouble. See, the Izumo should have just maybe pointed the bow in and Hope that he could thread the needle, but now nah, actually turns a little bit, offers a greater area for the torpedoes to hit, and there goes kill number four. And it's a double strike as well, because the eye will actually burn to death from those two fires. New Orleans comes charging in, and the 155s, if there is any weakness, it is sometimes dealing with cruisers. But Jericho, with only so little HP, decides, ah, hell with it, I am just going to go for torpedoes and hope this New Orleans sails into them. And off there, there we go. And there goes eight torpedoes in the water. With that little HP left, he is going to run into the island. And almost, almost survived that too. But there we go, very short period of time, Kraken Unleashed. All right, now, this name, I'm not going to try, but according to the email, it's pronounced Puro, so hopefully I got that right. Puro here, in a Yamato scout plane up 20-some-odd kilometers away, sees a Hindenburg sort of turning, fires. And this one, and this one, you can absolutely claim all skill, no luck. So watch the shells go in, and one, two, three... Triple Citadel onto a Hindenburg, devastating strike from that distance away. Very, very nice, Perot. Very nice. All right, so moving on from that, and here's another moment. Percy Percy 1 in Ikonaiza now. Got hit by torpedo bombers from the enemy Shokaku. Enemy Shokaku waited until his damage control was on cooldown. Comes in with those dive bombers, sets two fires. Ah, oh, how much you hate that as a battleship, right? Absolutely one of the worst things. And as you can see, Percy hasn't actually done much damage. Only 9,900. So that kind of sucks. Although, although it wasn't really helped by the fact that he was on a stock hull Ganiza now. Had he been on an upgraded hull, his AA would have been a lot better and probably would have done better against those planes. But regardless, getting burned to death, two fires, Shokaku is spotted. So... In his dying salvo, Percy fires. Only six shells, and these six shells have to work magic. So, here we go. Armor-piercing shells heading towards the Shokaku, and boom, a double citadel. And there goes, it's just a flesh wound. And that, by the way, is a big reason why I advocate firing armor-piercing at carriers. You know, yes, you know, fires are nice, but if you can citadel them to death really quickly, it'll be great. So, Dragon 1249 in Azuiho, enemy Omaha, three kilometers away. That Omaha could just stop right now, load AP, and Citadel Dragon to death. But, yeah, you know, Tier 5, sometimes anything can really happen at Tier 5. And, well, I'm not really sure what this Omaha was thinking at this particular time. I guess he thought that maybe his shells would be less effective at this range, and maybe he should go for torpedoes 
Which is what he does, but then, you know, if you're gonna fire torpedoes, at least make sure they're gonna hit. Well, Omaha just kind of, I don't even know, the potato the whole thing? Well, not only does he not kill him with guns or torpedoes, he actually gets rammed to death by this Weeho who actually picks up the Die Hard medal. Yeah, Omaha, I think you'll want to try that again. Maybe next time consider your guns. Speaking of guns, let's meet Steel Guns in a war spite and he's run up against an enemy Bayern. The Bayern, if you look at the map positioning, is in a really, really bad place. Well, you'd figure that in a situation like this, the Bayern should probably just go for the ram because, you know, at least you can pick up some damage that way. And that's better than nothing. Instead, the Bayern is doing a bit of a backwards retreat. You know, that's really supposed to be a French thing. You know, if the Germans, they're supposed to just charge forward and go for glorious... Okay, anyways. So what is supposed to kind of look like modern naval combat with long-range artillery and everything is soon to resemble a bit of an Age of Sail kind of combat as the Bayern continuing to reverse, has the Warspite Sail up right next to him, and essentially pound shots into that ship from point-blank range. And there goes the German as the Brits sail right on by. Is this a little bit... I think this is a little bit late to make another Brexit joke, right? I mean, that's a little bit old. I mean, Brexit was a while ago. Yeah, okay. Anyways, the Brits are leaving again. They're exiting the battle. Alright, so I've been at the whole Warships video thing for a while now. Uh, and I think, I think I'm starting to sound like a little bit of an old record when I go, Stop sailing broadside, don't show broadside to the enemy. I guess the message has not really been hammered home enough as the Yamagi is sailing broadside to a North Carolina and adios four citadels and there goes the Amagi well let's do a whole series of these here's RH1610 in the Amagi there's an Otago please do not sail broadside Grr, broken record sound <laughs> bye bye Otago okay so you figure that you know all right fine you're talking about tier 8 ships maybe it was a wallet warrior maybe by tier 10 things would get better well as ofi one two three shows against this yamato no no tier 10 players do the same things as the tier 8 players there's the yamato who really in all accounts and purposes can just bow in and absolutely wreck Ofi because Yamato Lopeng guns don't care about Montana armor. Instead, the Yamato goes, Hey, I heard you have problems getting damage. How about trying against my broadside and we'll see what happens. And Ofi says, Gladly, I will see how many citadels I can get on you and you die now. There are six citadels. And also, while that was happening, picked up a secondary kill on a destroyer. whoop de doo da Alright, RH1610 again. A little bit later on in the exact same battle, after deleting the Atago earlier, goes, Oh look, there's a Takao. Takao also turning broadside, and... Bye, Takao. <laughs> it's like, okay, come on, guys. Do I really have to do this? And uh, Montana player, same thing as the Yamato player. Hey, let's show broadside, see what happens. Turpits, bye-bye. Five Citadels. Never show broadside. It's <laughs> sounding like a really broken record. Alright, so if that's one thing, the next thing is, if you are in a destroyer, don't sit in smoke. If you are a destroyer and you intend to sit in smoke, at least sit in smoke in a way that it will be difficult for somebody else to torpedo you. So here's Final Spark, and he's sitting at least in a little bit of a position that's not flat on against these torpedoes so manages to slip through the gap and torpedo beats to safety unfortunately for other destroyers especially ones in ranked um well they do this well oh, there goes destroyer number one who is sitting broadside eating torpedo and there's destroyer number two also sitting broadside eating torpedoes and there's another situation. Enemy destroyers didn't even see this destroyer and pop smoke immediately. Stop doing this to yourself. 
Stop popping smoke. You're denying yourself vision. And if you pop smoke, don't sit still in smoke. There's kill number one. And there's kill number two. Both destroyers sitting broadside, happily in smoke, eating torpedoes for breakfast. All right. Destroyer play sometimes is really, really necessitating, shall we say, being aggressive. Here's Never. 7,000 some odd HP remaining. Not a lot of HP. There's a Shimakaze popped up 1.7 kilometers away from him. First of all, nice torpedo beating. And second of all, Shimakaze. This, this, this Kabarovsk has like 5,000 HP just turned around. It's a two salvo affair. You can just kill him with your guns. It's not hard. Well, the Shimakaze doesn't want to turn around to expose all of his guns. Instead, continues to use the rear gun only, firing the occasional salvo. And, well, you will see. That Shimmo was at pretty much near full HP, not aggressive enough. Starts running away and then tries to engage a Kabarovsk at range. It's like, could have just turned and engaged. And that Benson too, why were you turning away? Just rush the Kabarovsk and it's an easy, easy kill. Instead, the two destroyers both potato hard and never goes, oh, okay, well, thank you very much as I collect a kill on you. A fight that he, in most cases, should not have won. So, you have not very aggressive destroyers in this particular battle. And then you run into aggressive destroyers, like this Tachibana against Harv, who is in Umikaze. And by the way, I looked at this replay, I watched this video, and... Ugh, I still can't really explain what happened in this particular situation. Tachibana comes in, actually does ram at a good speed too, and... Yeah, Umakaze wasn't even packing flags. Gets diehard, doesn't get killed off, and yet... What? <sighs> I still can't explain this. I've tried, I've tried, I can't explain it. But anyways, Harv picks himself up a diehard at tier 2 with an Umakaze. Moving on, and there are days I try to picture a wargaming developer meeting. And this is kind of what comes to mind. We have to improve player experience. And of course the guy who says, hey, maybe we should do less RNGs, and we never hear anything more about that. So of course we get fun and engaging mechanics. So, there's a Mogami, takes a salvo from uh, North Carolina, boom, two citadels. That same salvo, if you repeated it, could have gotten you a couple of overpens. Could get devastating strike. You never know. It's R and Jesus. But of course, the greatest fun and engaging mechanic typically tends to deal with this: full HP, enemy destroyer or ship fire shells or torpedoes at you, and boom, detonation. Your game is now over. Fun and engaging mechanics. They said. All right. Well, moving on, and we got roller in a shimakaze. Fired a great wall of skill at enemy battleships and other things that's behind the smoke over there, including two tier 10 German battleships, the Grosse Kurfürst. And so he's tracking his torpedoes and looks good. Some of them look like they're going to be on target here. So Roller's just keeping track and he's like, oh, oh, looks like I'm going to get at least one hit on that Kurfürst over there. Oh, right along the stern there. Boom. Okay, that's one torpedo hit doing a good amount of damage. Hoping for some more, well, let's see, other Kerfers, one torpedo hit, and there goes 95,000 of your HP. Oh, yeah, great, right? Great, one takes a hit, doesn't happen, nothing really happens, the other one just takes a hit and poof, ship just gone. You're going back to port. That other battleship, amazingly calm, by the way. But, 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 as much as you complain about RNG Jesus destinating you, or RNG Jesus allowing you to take Citadel hits, or not getting Citadel hits, or whatnot. Nothing, nothing in World of Warships is ever going to beat this. I mean, this, you, no, like nothing's going to beat this ever again. So Andrew Hester's team, take a look at where they are. They're all trying to get on the enemy cap, but take a look at what's happening. Their own cap. Enemy ships are capping them. That's it. There's... Two enemy ships that are there. Look at the speed of the, that, that cap. It's going to be over before anybody can get back on cap to actually reset it. So, yeah, Andrew looks at it, looks at the situation, looks at where all the ships are. 
and pretty much resigns to the fate that the enemy is going to cap for the win. So what can he do? Well, I mean, there's nothing else to do over here. There's one enemy carrier that's running away. And likely not going to get any good hits on there, so he's trying to go back, maybe to, I don't know, any bit of luck, carrier spots something, maybe he gets a lucky shot in there. So, I don't know, in his, I guess, state of giving up, he fires randomly into the cap circle. Now that cap circle is pretty big, and enemy ships could be anywhere on that cap circle. I mean, maybe he's hoping lucky hit on a cruiser or something no 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 out of that entire calf circle in that most random of salvos he kills that farragut i mean think about it a tiny little destroyer on a calf circle that big with an unaimed shot that's not locked on that there's no indication on the map where you are. you take that shell and you die no matter how bad your luck is your luck is never gonna suck as much as that farragut captain's luck is gonna be it's just never i mean andrew's just like i rage fired Wow! All praise the great Orange Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this Nautical Tales episode. If you have any replays, make sure you check the video description on how to submit it to me. Anyways, folks, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.